announcements, open session and public comment. So um, it is Tuesday, February 23rd, 2021. Uh, oh, sorry, no, it isn't. <laughs> I'm reading from another agenda. Um, We're with you. <laughs> it is Tuesday, March 2nd, 2021 at 3 p.m. Um, I call this meeting of the Wellfleet Select Board to order in accordance with the temporary suspension and conference, uh, an enhancement of the open meeting law requirements by Governor Baker. Uh, the first item on the agenda is announcements, open session, and public comments. Public comments must be brief, and the board will not deliberate or vote on any matter raised solely during uh, announcements and public comments. Um, so uh, do I have any public comments? Um, not seeing any. Um, I'll just, uh, let's see, is Janet, is Janet on yet? She's coming. Yep, okay. I just emailed her too. Okay. So I'll just uh, start with a, uh, a comment here. Um, and that is that uh, every, every department head that's hired uh, typically is placed on the agenda uh, as, a, as a formality. Um, uh, this appointment, uh, this hiring was um, announced at a time that was too late for us to place this on our previous agenda. Um, and generally as, as the chair, I have a policy that if, if two board members want to discuss a subject that, that it should be discussed. Um, and that's why um, this meeting was called. Um, it's not outside of the ordinary. It's just typically these are on our agenda every time a department head is, is hired. Um, and I guess, we still waiting for Janet right now. I'd like to have. I did her. talk to her. She's just figuring having a glitch with getting logged on. Okay. All right. I have a question on Mike. Yes. It's Helen. Hi. So um, I'm not quite sure. Are we going to do this meeting in public session? I hope, but yes. if not, listen, we are. We have to. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> I would assume that, and I was just checking because originally you're not whatever. The <coughs> oh dear. Uh, I need to get something to drink. Hold on. Anyway, thank you for answering my question. Okay. I just want to give Janet a chance to get on before we start having discussion if she's on her way into logging in. Zoom has been having some issues the past couple of days. Not a big, big fan of dead air here. Um. <laughs> well, I sent you an email and I, I mean, if we can, we're gonna have to, the select board is going to have to send me some dates that they can have. You do have to have an executive session for a couple of things. Yes. Um, not this included, obviously, but um, if you could just send me some dates, I can check out the tides for you if you want so that we can do. Okay, yeah, why don't um, we figure that out? Okay. But uh, I guess I I guess I'll start this discussion. I, I don't want to leave everybody hanging and waiting for too long. It's five past three right now. So so I'll first say uh, that you know the the reason that this provision uh, is in the town charter and that it was included was to ensure that the town administrator conducts an adequate hiring process to hire a qualified candidate. That the select board is not the hiring authority. And it's my opinion that the board should not exercise its veto power unless the hiring process was inadequate or there are extraordinary circumstances. And uh, about our, our candidate here, um, the, first of all, I, I think this board um, has made its preference pretty clear that um, that it uh, prefers 
local candidates to be hired when they're qualified for the uh, for the position, and uh, that also that a robust process is followed in in hiring. And I believe that these processes were followed. I think that um, the town administrator did a good job putting together a panel of of um, people to conduct interviews. Um, and we had um, a lot of letters in support of this candidate. Um, he clearly has uh, like, he clearly has extensive knowledge of our Harbor, great worth work ethic, uh, dedication to the town um, and the Marina. Um, I've seen him personally uh, show a great ability to, to work with the public and um, I'm very much in support of hiring this, uh, of this hire. Um, and I will go uh, to the board uh, for their thoughts. Mr. Chairman, if, if you want, I can describe the hiring process that we used, if that would be helpful. Um, I think that would be a good idea to start. And then, because it'll probably come up in questions. So um, why don't you go ahead, Maria? Sure, so we had about a dozen applicants. I screened those applicants down to ones that had Harbor Master or Assistant Harbor Master experience at some point in their career. We selected, um, I selected four candidates to be interviewed, um, one of them dropped out. So we interviewed the remaining <clears throat> candidates and we're happy to share the questions with you because the questions you know, had to do with their philosophy, their experience, their education, and their knowledge of Wellfleet Harbor and Marina. Um, the interview panel included Rebecca and myself, um, Nancy Chavetta, um, Stuart Smith, who's a Harbor master from Chatham, and Martha Wilson, who has um, been on or associated with the Marine Advisory Committee and a member of the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, our um, decision was unanimous in, sort, in support of promoting Will for the position. Okay, um, I think Justina had her hand up first and then Helen. Yeah, I think those uh, two uh, frameworks are great to hear uh, here, so thank you. Um, I also think this is important the select board have a chance to discuss any departmental level hire because our department heads really uh, run our town really or in, in one sense do and hopefully sometimes are generational decisions because I hope someone like uh, William would stick around and I think you said so in your letter. Um, I have a quick question for Maria. Uh, now the 12 resumes, did the screening committee see them all? Um, no, I screened them. Uh -huh. um, I also, sorry, Chief Polly, I know you'll get me later, but I forgot to say that Chief Polly was also on the interview panel. Um, no, I screened them. Because mm -hmm. um, I hadn't heard that we got so many resumes. Um, there was a memo that I sent to all of you um, under a confidential um, subject line that included the information regarding okay. the hiring process. Good, because that was one of my concerns, because sometimes we have a screening process that, um, for whatever reason, I mean, recruitment's its own, own thing. So that, I think that's great. I have a quick question about, um, and it's for both Maria and William. Um, Maybe first, William, would you mind if I asked you a question and through Michael to William about your resume? Um, I, I think that- um, Is that inappropriate? I, I just don't think we're here to interview the candidate. Uh, no, we're not. But here's my question. This is clearly a job that requires management experience. I think if I read right, the budget's close to half a million dollars a year operating and then I'm not sure what the debt service is, but it's not inconsiderable. There's a fair amount of infrastructure and 
it's it's a um it's a chunk of responsibilities. And I think that if the applicant, whoever that applicant is, uh, doesn't have any management uh, degree or coursework or experience, it's unkind um, not to give a pathway there. So my suggestion um, would be for everybody's benefit for example, Four C's, Cape Cod Community as a, a associate in um, business path. And uh, those classes might not be too hard to take, you know? So that's a suggestion um, as one starts in management shoes, like, you know, we're, who's gonna show me how to do this? <laughs> and so, um, you know, William will be responsible and ultimately Maria, you'll be responsible for the performance of that enterprise fund for that budget for that infrastructure and for that capital budget. So those will be my questions um, at budget season. Uh, so my suggestion from running a small company and being thrown into uh, having to do a lot of things I didn't know how to do is that those four C's classes look kind of tasty. Okay, uh, Helen. You're muted, Helen. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes, I thought I was unmuted. I apologize. So um, one of the things that bloomed in my brain at our last select board meeting was, I'm the only person on the board now who's been in as many promotion from within um situations like this right whether they're people that the select board appoints or the ta appoints okay and one of the things that they all have in common this this is not particular to this particular position or mr sullivan's being the finalist is that promotion from within deserves a little extra attention partly to reassure the public, partly so that the appointing authority, whoever that is, gets to think about it a little more carefully. At no point have I thought that the finalist who was selected carefully was a bad idea. I just thought that it would be a good idea for the select board to take a slightly closer look because of what I just said. I agree with Mike. The first thing you said, Mike, was spot on, which is we're having this special meeting because there's a, we have 14 days to either take no action or to veto the choice by the town administrator and to take a closer look at what the process was. Um, Maria Broadbent did email us as to how that had gone. And now, thank you, Maria. It's one of the useful things about this meeting. Everybody that's attending it and anybody that wants to watch the video recording knows how carefully it was done, right? And that it was done properly. And there's a level of support for the appointee that comes with the public understanding how good the process was. And again, this is particularly important with promoting from within. It just, no matter how good the candidate is, everybody sees that this went fairly. It isn't somebody's pet person. It's a good choice, right? So the other thing is that I take Justina's point about, hey, self-help. You know, I took a procurement officer general course earlier in July, not because I'm ever gonna do that, but because I wanted to know more. But I think in the case of Mr. Sullivan, who I had a very good conversation with this morning, which I greatly appreciated, got permission to do it. Um, it's more about how whoever is a Harvard master figures out how to organize the skill set in his or her department, just as Nancy Chavetta has done very well in her department. In other words, what needs to be done and who is best at it? 
And the Harbor Master doesn't have to do it all, and neither does the TA, which is why we have an ATA. You just have to figure out how to have it done consistently and well, and it doesn't all have to be you. In other words, Harbor Master, in my opinion, doesn't have to have the same level of business acumen and being able to budget as the department does, the department certainly does, but how that happens can be organized in so many different ways, which is not to say that Mr. Sullivan can't do it. So I'm perfectly ready to take no action on this, having given it a good look in public. And I just wanna say one more thing, which is in my experience over and over, when there's this kind of situation, a new uh, hire for, you know, this is a, this is a position which has been held by one person for a long time. And it's a heavy duty position. It's as controversial, shall we say, that may not be the right adjective, as a shellfish constable. And over many years, I've heard a lot about how the marina is run, pros and cons from all different people, never mind recent developments, which have not been normal because of COVID. And getting pros and cons from different people, if they're not vilifying, abusive, off the wall, ax grinding, I listen to everything unless it's abusive language about someone or towards me, in which case I say, cool off and we'll talk later. But I listen to everything. I don't repeat it. And that's an important part of what we do on the select board. We listen to pros, we listen to cons, we think about all of it. And whatever has happened about this particular position, it's happened way more about others. I mean, two fire chiefs ago, I don't even wanna think about that again. The shellfish constable, ah, it was epic. So this has been just kind of normal pros and cons coming in. Lots of, lots of appreciation support for someone who was known in the town. And I just think it's been okay to meet on this again. It's not because at least for my part, I think there's anything wrong with this choice. Thank you. Okay, Janet, please. I, uh, sorry, I was a little late. Um, so last week I was a bit dismayed and shocked to put it nicely and I like what Helen said just now but the way she worded it last or the way she spoke it last week to me was pretty disheartening to say the least and I thought there's a bigger problem you know Will has already been our um, harbor master for a year uh, Mike has come in back and forth and Mike has been really great about supporting Will helping Will teaching Will um, I also want to say that I talked to Mike Travato a number of times, uh, and Mike assured me that he's been helping Will all along with the grant funding uh, and everything else he needs, especially before Mike left. Uh, I have this this whole time. I mean, I've so I've been down at the harbor quite a bit for somebody who doesn't have a boat or go fishing, um, and in the and I knew, I knew that Mike was leaving for over a year. So I've been kind of having feelers out and the, I've only heard two people not be for Will. I mean, it's, it's that so obvious that I thought we would just easily go over this. Will has the support of the Marina Advisory Committee, town administrator, assistant town administrator, town clerk, town treasurer, town accountant, uh, friends, and he's been doing this. So yes, I would agree. I would love it if we could just move on and um, take no action. It's been a hey, long Ryan. time coming. Go ahead, Ryan. Um, yeah. Um, so, I mean, my main comment is that, um, you know, ultimately we are not judging Will. Um, and we're judging Maria's ability to hire uh, qualified staff um, for this position. Um, I think with the, the first hire that she's made so far, um, 
that we've actually seen. I know that we've made two two since she came on, but we've only seen um, the Newtown accountant so far. Um, I mean, the the Newtown accountant seems like a great hire. Um, and if a similar process was followed and a similar level of um, scrutiny was applied, um, which definitely seems to be the case, um, that you know we should you know support. Uh, the town administrator's decision here, um, and um, yeah, um, that that's all I'm thinking. I, I've I've really liked um, the ones that she's hired so far, and, and the yeah. So, thank you. Yeah, good. Thank you. So, Mr. Chair, can we just um, have that? Do you want a motion, or do you want more people to? We speak? have no motion to make. We okay. can just accept it. And by doing that, we waive our. 14 day uh, window um, and uh, in my opinion. Um, so um, I, was, hand is up, Mike. I think that everyone's spoken and- uh, Mike, I have my hand up. Okay, Helen. Yeah, a couple things which we can't do at this meeting because it's not on the agenda. So, um, this is uh, this has been an unusual year, and it was also unusual for our acting harbor master because the retirement of the harbor master Mike Flanagan came right with COVID happening and the summer. It's not been normal, right? Um, and. I have two things I'd like to have on the agenda item before a contract is signed at the next meeting. The first one of which is for us to look carefully at the pay scale for this employee, generally, this position. And the second is for us to discuss it. Should there be more money? Should there be less? And also to give a, excuse me, I'm That's still on talking. The agenda. That's right. I'm bringing so up two talk about it. to discuss in the future at the next meeting. But we're not These supposed to talk about the topics. Not later. on that at this point. We can talk. We don't have topics for future agenda right now. Oh, we don't. Okay. I don't think it's even posted topics for future agenda right no. now. No. Um, so really, this okay. is it. So I. You can, I, you can email me, Helen. I, I, I get it. I would just like to, uh, let's just make a motion to take no action on this. I know we don't have to do that, but it kind of yeah. solidifies it so that uh, that uh, we can move on here. Yeah, we vote. I would second that. I think somebody has to say so moved anyways. So moved, oh. <laughs> I second, Helen second. Okay, whatever. A roll call vote. Janet, I. Justina, I. Ryan, I. Michael, I. Helen, I. Okay. All right. Thank you. All well, right. I expect to Thank see you. you on a boat with the suit on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah that. looking good. <laughs> deal uh, the I, deal. If I could say something, I, I want to thank everyone. Um, it, it's greatly appreciated. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Will, and good luck. Thank you for serving our town well. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Okay, bye. -bye. Ooh, congratulations, Will. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, I'm so uh, that's it for this meeting. Uh, can I have a motion to adjourn? I so move. Second. Helen. Second. Roll call vote, please. Janet, I. Justina, I. Ryan, I. Michael, I. Helen, I. Okay, the motion carries five zero. Okay, bye, bye everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.